Hello, I'm Yuri Bacon, and I'm going to finally show you the broken pause menu of Underhero. But first, to explain it, let's start with some observations. If I pause the game, you'll notice that the game doesn't stop. But if any of you have played and had to stop in the middle of playing, you realize that things like jumping and then pausing has some things not continue to happen, like the camera following you, because the camera won't return to where it should be until I unpause. As you can imagine, this applies to a lot of systems. For example, this is Mina Guana over here. You'll notice he's been walking left to right from one point to another, just over and over. That's all what all Mina Guanas do, but if I stand in his path, where he isn't, and then pause and wait for him to show up, he's just going to push me. I normally should be in uh, combat right now, but instead I'm just being pushed. If I unpause and try it again but jump on top of him first, you'll notice he just stops expecting combat. But if I unpause, it just doesn't happen. And then I can just stand on his head, or float on his head I guess, and just push him around. And the thing is, this has some interesting effects. Uh, for example, if I go to another amino iguana over here, I can show that by pushing the amino iguana, they actually aren't bounded by gravity like everything else is. And you can just keep going this way, using the amino iguana as a movable platform. Which is quite hilarious. And I can even go so far as to touch the loading zone over there. You know, just a after a minute, after I get there. Doing this isn't quite so useful in the demo, since that's literally the best example of using an amino iguana as a moving platform in the demo. If it were left in the final game, it'd definitely be useful, but I hope, I doubt it will make it into the final demo, or final game. There's also some other weird characteristics of the pause menu. For example, if you take damage in the overworld, you would actually be able to regain control of your character while in the pause menu. Which I'll show you once I can get to the nearest spike pet. Nearest spike pit should be right about here. You see, if I pause... Oh! Well, normally I touch the spike pit, but apparently I found a way to get inside the spike pit. But, normally when I pause over a spike pit, I take damage from it. Hmm, it's not doing it for me today. Well, we're going to go to a different spike pit because I know it does work. So, bear with me as I run even further into this level. These spike, for example, these spike pits over here, if I jump 
over them and then pause, I will get hurt by them and moved over here and lying down again, allowing me to jump up and continue to control myself. Which allows me to continue to play the game as normal, except I have the pause menu open, which isn't on its own again, isn't very useful since you can't do anything in this pause menu except quit and just get rid of it at any time. But, as you can see, I can get into combat now with it open. This can be useful because this will allow you to be able to quit the game well in combat, but let's not do that for the time being. Because, for example, I can even just fight this boss. Mini boss, that is. I haven't really found much else that this broken pause menu can do yet, but I know it can do more. I'm, just, I'm pretty sure I found something before, but I just honestly forget it. I should also note that I found that with this glitch, uh, I found it possible to somehow cancel an attack in the middle of doing it, so that way you would rapidly do ma multiple attacks, regardless of how much stamina you had, and insta-kill enemies in like a couple seconds. Uh, more like a second. But I don't know how I did it, and I haven't been able to recreate it since I first did it. Which just is kind of lame. And if I had to take a guess, it has to do with the memory leak Under Hero has, because the game had been open for a few hours at that point. But, there's not too many other particularly useful uses for it. Again, just waiting on this boss to die. But, the last thing I have to note is that while the pause menu is up, but you have control of yourself, you can pause the game again. As much as you may not want to do that. Uh, the, and then this next part, there's no real, nothing really to show on the screen to go with it, and I don't have any proof to show this, but as far as I can tell, the reason all of this happens is that the pause menu has two variables related to it. Uh, it has two Boolean values. Let's call them player has control. If true, the player has control to move themselves, like so. And the other one, game was paused, which, if true, would show the pause menu. Normally, pause, uh, game is paused is false, because there's no pause menu, but player has control is true, because you can move yourself. But if you pause the game, those flop. The game is paused, and so the menu is shown, but player has control is no longer true, so you can no longer move yourself. Uh, the reason I believe there's two different ones is because... Pausing the game isn't the only thing that takes control away from you. Another thing also is cutscenes. Whenever Elizabeth talks to you... I know there's a way to get Elizabeth to talk to you. I forget how. For example, here. We are currently considered being in a cutscene talking with Elizabeth, but... We're so we're unable to move. Player has control equals false. But the game is a pause, so there's no pause menu shown. Game is pause equals false. But at no point should the game ever be paused, and should you be able to play. So it was never accounted for them to be both true, which is why it's possible for you to gain control of yourself and have the game paused. Mainly because this was an oversight, never accounting for you to take damage while paused. That's purely conjecture though, but I feel I'm probably right. And the last thing is that he, I did find one use for this so far. If any of you know the stuff I found, you would definitely know the one glitch I found that lets you just fucking moon jump all the way into the air, right at the beginning of the game. And I found that pausing right before you do it actually can help 
you help help you perform this trick. For example, again, you see in some iguana walking around, and if you stand in front of it, it tra uh, triggers and it walks into you. It triggers the cutscene for the first tutorial. Elizabeth will start talking to you, and this is why I think there's two separate variables here because this slightly proves it. The game is paused, and so therefore I can't go into the combat like I should be able to. But that's not considered when tr for cutscenes to happen, so it allows me to not. Eh, okay, I'm bad, ex bad at explaining myself sometimes. But cut cutscenes are still allowed to happen. For example, if I wait for that mean iguana to move out of the way, I can go through all of Elizabeth's dialogue and run away. Combat doesn't happen until I actually walk into him. But the useful thing for this is I can continue to go through the tutorial as normal with the game paused until the right part to perform our glitch, which would be right about here. I'm not going to explain how this glitch works since I've already explained it before, but once I get out of this battle, I'm now playing the game again with the game with control of myself, but the, but you'll notice the game is still paused. I screwed up the glitch and didn't get out of bounds like I really wanted to show, but if I get close enough here, you can see, you can see what I mean is that the camera is no longer bound to, lim to the limits it's supposed to, and now it just always leaves the player in the center of the screen, more or less, like it always does, even when you're near the side of the screen, or what should be the side of the screen. Since you'll see here, when I run over here, the camera follows the mask kit a bit better. I'll try this again. But it allows you to, while doing this trick, be able to completely see out of bounds since the camera follows you perfectly, which makes, which makes the uh, trick to skip straight to the first boss from the first tutorial a bit easier. Since you can see completely, since you have a much clearer idea of where you are, it also allows you to explore out of uh, the out of bounds here in this first first room even better. Okay, this time I definitely did get it. And normally, right about here, the camera would stop and you, uh, you wouldn't be able to see Mask Kid anymore as it went off screen. But now, we can see Mask Kid completely as he goes out of bounds. And we can see the very left side of where the loading zone normally is over here. Loading zone's somewhere towards the right. I don't want to touch it. And we get a, bit, a really clear idea of what out of bounds looks like as we fall to this... De death layer point, which works just like the spikes in the other room that I showed earlier, except for some reason this teleports me way up. We are now out of bounds in the waterfall room, which is actually placed right above the first room, if you did not know, and we can actually... I'm gonna glide over here real quick and be able to swim in, in air, and I'll be able to show you that normally, when you go to perform this skip, when you go all the way to the right, the camera kind of stops. But the camera will keep going for us if we keep going right now, which definitely makes it easier. Normally the camera would stop somewhere about here, but now we're already going past that point and we just keep going right. But we can also keep going up and the camera follows us too which now allows us to get a better idea of what's up here. Normally you can only see to about halfway up the screen, but now we can see all the way up here, making for getting into this room while swimming in air much easier since we can see where we're going now, rather than kind of taking a stab in the dark. 
so we can now consistently get into this room swimming in air. Which makes it fun because we can fight that mini boss well considered to be in the water, which is really fun. Since water does change battle physics. But we can also keep going up and see what's all the way up there, or we can go all the way down and see what's down there, or to the left. Just be careful because there are some things out of bounds that will just remove you from this state, will zip you where you don't want, and just make you unable to get back to where you are, or pr potentially soft lock you if you're not careful. But thankfully, with the menu up, you can quit at any time. For example, if we go down, normally the camera would stop somewhere here and you'd keep seeing waterfalls, but now we can see the black and eventually the blue sky from the room below. But if we get too much farther down, we will be zipped back up again. I don't know if we can avoid that by going all the way left to right. As far as I've tried, no. That bottom layer there that will zip us just keeps going on forever. But we can just keep going on and on as we'd like and try to explore. So, if you like Out of Bounds, this will definitely help you. Yep. Just be careful though, because you can touch these spikes from the sides. Which will do that to you which will force you back onto wherever you last stood and put you in a grounded state, so now we are forced back in bounds again. And that's all I really have to show. So... Here, just have me opening a door while I run around while the door opens. If I ever find any more ways to abuse this pause menu, I will definitely make more videos and or posts about it. But so far I have not found anything interesting other than that one glitch that I've only been able to do once that let me one shot any enemy I wanted because that would be particularly useful since that would allow us to finally kill the Moth Queen within normal, under normal playing circumstances, but I don't think it'll be ever possible to do again because I'm pretty sure it's related to the uh, memory leak that Underhero has and it might have been like a one in a lifetime kind of thing. So, yeah, that's it. Enjoy your broken camera.